There we go. That's the bad boy. Why do you always clap? Uh, syncs the audio. Does it? Do you know that? So, because so, you know, we're recording audio here and then we've got the camera that, then I can line them up because I can visually see the audio spike of the clap. So then I can line up the audio tracks. It just helps. I, I, I literally didn't know that. Oh, really? You just thought I clapped because I'm. Because you're weird. Celebrating the start of the podcast. Because you've only got half a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm growing it out. <laughs> Hello one and all and welcome to Behind the Glass, the podcast which aims to take you behind the scenes of the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass and of the automotive and social media worlds. You join me, your host Sam, from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass, as well as Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. We've upgraded our setting. Which is why I had this built. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we have made our way onto Tony's famous balcony it's a mezzanine sorry i knew you know what that's why i paused because <laughs> i knew balcony was wrong i knew there was a better word mezzanine if you are watching us here on the youtube channel welcome this is the place that we've been talking about for about six months if not longer um the iconic mezzanine and we have finally made our way out here it is our new location for the podcast it's brilliant it's brilliant we're loving life we have no idea i mean it might be a bit echoey but you can see behind us there is a selection of some of the cars that tony currently has for sale here at gravelwood if you're watching us here on youtube make sure to hit subscribe uh, and turn on notifications for future episodes if you're listening to us i apologize that you can't see the stunning setting we're in why not head over to the youtube channel and check out uh the the new place that we have uh um <coughs> what <laughs> acquired sorry i stopped a bit there uh, it's been a long weekend uh that weekend has been spent at goodwood festival of should we start again no. should, we, should we swap roles please <laughs> um i can have a sip of water tony tell everyone where have we been the last four days <laughs> the last four days has been spent at the goodwood festival speed where myself and sam were mobbed <laughs> <laughs> can you say that mm. You just did. Um, <laughs> I will rephrase it and say where Tony and I were very lucky to meet a ton of you guys. Um, so yeah, sorry, I needed that sip of water. I was a little bit more dehydrated than I realised. Here we go. Let's get things rolling properly. We have just spent the last four days at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, arguably one of the best automotive events in the world. Uh, and it was amazing. It was 200, uh, 250,000 people attended, I think, across the four days. Um, and we were very lucky to meet a whole load of you guys there across well Tony you were there Saturday and Sunday yeah and I was there all four days Thursday Friday so Saturday, you're tired because so. I was tired you must be knackered mate. I mean I think people could probably tell because I'm not really flowing very well this morning or this afternoon um I'm knackered I'm yeah. absolutely knackered I haven't recovered yet I took yesterday as a bit of a rest day but it, it hasn't done the trick I'm uh, still struggling to operate as a human being um, <laughs> But the biggest thing about Festival Speed is the Michelin Supercar Paddock, where a whole load of manufacturers uh, display their great, greatest and bestest and newest supercars. Their trophy pieces. There we go, their trophy pieces. And in fact, a few manufacturers this year uh, used it as a way to launch new cars. So this episode is a Goodwood Festival of Speed special. It's only taken us four minutes to get those words out. Sorry about that. Um, but that is what we are doing today. And we're going to be talking about the cars that really uh, jumped out at us, including the Ferrari 488 Pista, the McLaren 600 LT, the McLaren Senna, the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera, the Porsche Speedster Concept. Hello! As well as a handful mm. of other bits and bobs. So yes, we are finally underway. Sorry that this intro has been a little bit of a, a draggy one. Um, I feel like I'm up to speed now. Tony, are you excited? I am ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go rolling with the Goodwood Festival of Speed special. <laughs> So, I want to kick things off with the Ferrari 488 Pista. 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 Now, I'm a bit annoyed because a lot of people were calling it the Pista. Which Pista, right? It's a very English thing to call it the Pista. And I, I don't like that. It should be the Pista. Because Pista, this sounds like you're, you're taking the piss, mate. Pista, meaning Italian for track. There we go. Yeah, the Pista. So, I just feel like it, it needs that bit of flair. But again, I guess 
Maybe it's like calling the speciale the speciale rather than the speciale. Yeah, that is Maybe it. I'm just being the a bit speciale, of not... Yeah. speciale, isn't it? It is the speciale. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'm being a, a, a bit of a, a noob there. Um, but I prefer calling it the pista. Now, this was the first time you've seen the car in the no. flesh? Where did you see it? Geneva, mate. Of course. With everyone else. You did. Uh, I forgot you were there. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> But this car they had on display at Goodwood was the Pilota edition, uh, which is a slightly pointless livery, uh, available only to Ferrari Challenge customers. Um, I don't actually think the livery did it many favours. No. The only thing I think I really liked were the wheels. Which were the carbon fibre wheels. The carbon fibre wheels. I don't think they go with red, though, with the normal red. Oh, that's interesting. What colour do you think they would suit? I think they'd suit, like, the silver car at Geneva really suited that correct um i think it would suit a black car as well because it would be stealth i concur uh what about a yellow car yes mm. and a blue Ooh, basically any, anything but red because red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all the colors but yeah i, I mean mm. i love the visual looks of the pista um i think i think it looks aggressive and purposeful but yet still elegant um but I agree. I did. I just didn't like the spec of the one on display at Festival of Speed. I could not stop looking at the back of that car. Oh, really? It looks so. You went up the hill in it. Okay. Well, we're going to come on to that. But I'm trying to tease it out a bit. I'm trying oh, to drag sorry. it out. Because yeah. <laughs> you haven't told me. I'm like, that's no, good to know. No, I haven't given you any information. Nothing. Um, you obviously would have seen it go up the hill. Yeah. Well, did you have any just... thoughts from the outside? Did you like you know? Or was a bit of a blur, mate. From what I saw, <laughs> there is one criticism. Please. It's a bit quiet. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't want to monologue this, but I feel like I have to now. What's it like inside? Come on. We right. want to know. I'm going to just start things off with a big statement. Go. I was a little disappointed. Really? Oh! Mr. Mr. Fan of the Year, seen through glass, <laughs> is disappointed in the pista. Okay. So this is the thing. Maybe my expectations were too high. I was only in the passenger seat. I haven't driven it. And it was a 55 second run up a hill. So I'm really holding back my judgment until I get behind the wheel of this car. But a few things to say. Firstly, getting in and sitting in it, it just felt like a very highly specced 488. Yep. Now for me, when I've got into a 430 Scud, when I've got into 458 Speciale, Challenge for Dali, immediately they already feel a bit more special. Yep. This, unfortunately, I didn't really get that sensation stepping inside. It just felt, as I say, like a, a, a 488 with a ton of carbon fiber. And in fact, the 488 Spider I got lent a few weeks ago was relatively similar. So the that white was car. the white car. Yeah. So that was already a little tiny bit disheartening. Yeah. The sound inside the car is identical to a standard 488. Fine. It doesn't sound any louder. It doesn't sound any more aggressive. It's the exact same sound. So that, again, a little disappointing. There's not much you can do with a turbocharged engine, but I was expecting something. A bit more noise. A bit more, but yeah. it sounds identical. And as you say, not that loud. Even when the driver was revving it, I was like, mm, maybe, maybe don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't stop. <laughs> Didn't help. We were following an 812 Superfast out of the paddock each time, which okay, was like fun. lighting up its tires. And I was like, this is oh, man. <laughs> and then we, <laughs> we were there like, Whoa. <laughs> anyway so off we go I was chatting to the driver really interesting really nice guy who said that for him the car is very similar to an actual 488 challenge it does really feel you know driving wise like a true race car for the okay. road however to me it was unbelievably comfortable the seats are the same seats you can get in a 48 if you want them. There wasn't a lot of noise. You know, often when you get into those special Ferraris, you get a load, like, you know, you can hear everything. Yeah. Because it's so bare. Yeah. I didn't hear everything. It was, it was relatively sedate in there. Now, for my passenger lap or my passenger ride, don't get me wrong, it was unbelievably quick. But a 48 is unbelievably quick. Yeah. Like all these supercars. And if I'm honest, from the passenger seat, it felt just like a very quick ride in a 488. It, I, I didn't it's have, already very quick. Well, there we go. Like, yeah. I didn't have any heightened experience. I didn't feel anything more. Okay. Whilst I would argue that from the passenger seat in a Scuderia, in a 16M, in a Challenge Stradale, and in a Speciale, which I haven't actually really done apart from static, it has felt like a heightened experience. Can I tell you my thoughts? Please. The biggest problem with the 488 Pista 
is the 488. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because the 488 is so good. I know I keep banging on about it, but it is so good. How can you make that car so much better into the Pista? It's probably 20% better, which is still better, but you're not going to notice it in normal road conditions. Uh, and that was the thing is that... Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the way it looks. It's a Ferrari, I love it. But... Uh, I didn't step out going, oh my God, I want and I need that. In fact, I just fell in love with the 812 more because yeah. it was doing burnouts everywhere and sounding incredible and all the drivers were like, God, the 812 is so good. Yeah. So all I did is want an 812. I didn't really leave wanting a Pista. Okay, so question. Yeah. If you could pick one or the other, which would you have? 812 or Pista? Yeah. 812. Really? Uh, hands down. Okay, fine hands down so that's a bit weird so i didn't expect to be making these statements um uh, and i'm a little disappointed but i am holding back final judgment until i drive it because yeah. it may be behind the wheel it's an, a truly different experience and something absolutely intoxicating and amazing so we will at some point get behind the wheel of one of those which cars. is normally the way when you drive a ferrari that's what it does it just changes you there we go so so i, I think that will be the true telling point and don't get me wrong the the driver that i was sat next to who does work for multiple companies not just like a ferrari aficionado did say it is brilliant and he does love it so so i think it must be incredible to drive but i was a little underwhelmed on my passenger ride let's move on no way <laughs> you're smirking aren't you? i can see you behind what? you might not be able to see our faces too well but i can tell you right now tony's smirking okay f initial impressions my gc3 rs or pista take values out you're smirking now <laughs> <laughs> No, because it's not fair. I haven't driven the Pista. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't driven the Pista. And I probably still would pick the Pista. The 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 hard thing from a... Because I've only been in the passenger seat of both. I've never driven either. 458 Speciale versus 488 Pista. I'd pick the Speciale. Because of the fear to and the noise. Yeah. It... it, it I've only passenger ridden in both and they've both felt, the, the 458 felt like more of an occasion. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, okay, I want to move on because it's getting awkward and I love Ferrari, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and talk about the McLaren 600LT. Oh, see you. <laughs> stay, stay. Tony, uh, for those of you listening, Tony has tried to walk away. Uh, this is the hardcore, lightweight, track-focused variant of the hardcore, lightweight, track-focused 570F. <laughs> <laughs> um, newly launched, freshly launched by McLaren. No one had really seen it. This was the first time the car had been uh, on display publicly uh, and had a dynamic display. Uh, Tony, tell me your thoughts. <sighs> Do I have to? Please. Okay, fine. So, uh, initial thoughts, it looks mega. I really love the look of it. The one was, that was round the back uh, of McLaren Hospitality in black, that's probably how I'd have it. Uh, although you'd lose the carbon, if it had a carbon roof and you'd lose the carbon. But it looked like a stockier, prettier version of the 6.7 by LT. Stupid fast, figures are unbelievable. Uh, I think it's as fast as a Pista, which is unbelievable. It's not a sports series car. I just don't, I don't understand how they can justify it. It's a full-on, like the 570s and the 540, we've said this before, they're full-on supercars. Um, but it's just another McLaren, mate. And, and, I, and I am not going to be derogatory. I'm just not that excited about it for one reason only they're going to make millions of them okay um <laughs> i'm so <sort of, laughs> i'm sort of with you um i think visually it looks like an aftermarket 570s i think it looks like a sort of novatech or a mansory or i don't think it looks oem something Paul Wallace has designed. Honestly, I feel like it's something Paul Wallace would have designed. Yeah. Like, it's a bit <laughs> weird in that sense. Um, and so, so I don't, I think it's cool. I think it looks cool, but I don't love the way it looks. I think it looks a tiny bit gimmicky. And the exhaust, for example, for those who haven't seen pictures of the car, the exhaust exit just in front of the rear wing on the upper deck, I guess you'd like call it. Like a 918 Spider. Yeah, Similar. but further back, yeah, much yeah. further back. So, so they're still at the back of the car, but they're at the top rather than sort of exiting where the brake lights are. Um, now they shoot a whole load of flames, these exhausts. I feel like this is McLaren like, dialing in some emotion 
Do you know what I mean? Like this is like 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 our cars have got a our cars are exciting. Look, they shoot flames. Yeah, and because that's got, the only way we're going to sell them. Well, <clears throat> okay. So on top of that, uh, I've heard this is unconfirmed. I've heard that the LT Coupe 600 LT Coupe is going to be a limited run, like a GT2 RS, like a GT3 RS. There'll be no official number on it. So They'll run production for a couple of years or whatever, just make as many as they can, which will be a ton. There will be a Spider variant that should probably just be called the 600, 600 LT Spider, but it might have a different name that will be limited to 500 units. Now, going along with your thing of, oh, there'll be millions of them, I know somebody who ordered a 600 LT Coupe at the Festival of Speed. There was no, he was just allowed, like straight there, yeah, I want one, bang, bish, bash, bosh, ordered one, it's coming. Did he have a McLaren before? Nope. Okay, fine. So, the two dealers that I know, so this is obviously not true, or you've had to have a McLaren before from the dealer that you're going to order it from for us to let you have one. So I think this continues a bit of miscommunication or confusion along the lines of McLaren's sort of hierarchy list. We talked in the previous podcast, if you haven't listened to that, by the way, go back and check it out, about these kind of manufacturer lists, these VIP uh, prestige lists. Um, McLaren's one does seem to be a bit confuddled, uh, doesn't seem to follow much rhyme or rhythm. Uh, and I think you will hear multiple stories from multiple different sources. But all I know is that, as I say, a friend just went in and just ordered one bish bash bosh. It's yeah. coming in January or whenever. Yeah. So, Do you know the price? Yes. Would you like to tell the lovely audience? Uh, Spect. I, I think Spect. I'm just trying to remember what he told me. I think Spect. It was two sixty. I think with the club sport pack, two fifty yeah. something. Two fifty something with the club sport pack, which is a lot. It's a ton of money. A seven twenty s money. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, it's a weird one. I mean. They really were out to try and prove that this car is fun. You know, they were doing donuts, massive burnout, shooting flames. Like they were, this is our, this is our crazy wild car. Having owned a 540C, I did not want that car for an, I did, there's no part of me that went, oh, I really want one. I, it just passed me by. Yeah, same. Which is a shame. I, I, it's a massive shame. But what is that? What are McLaren doing wrong as previous <clears throat> McLaren owners and people that lust after these kind of cars? Why don't we want that car? I, do you know what? I really want them to do well. English brand, something different. The, the technology, that the, they're so advanced in terms of if you just look at the way that they perform in front of anything else, they're always next level. But they have this problem with building too many cars for the market, in turn, stops making it special, which is why we don't want one. There's a weird air about them that's almost like 911-ish, like standard 911. Yeah. Do you know, there's so many of them, they're so accessible, and you see quite a few of them that they, they lose some of the, you're so right, they've lost a bit of that sort of specialness. Um, and also, they're constantly upgraded and replaced, which has to be applauded. Like the rate at which McLaren develop their cars and bring out new technology and, uh, and new models is unbelievable. And where they've come in seven years like yeah. that is mad. Yeah. But for example, the 600 LT, I don't desperately want it because I know in a year or two years time, there'll be a 625. Do you know what I mean? It's like the 720. Yeah. Everyone's going, oh, I want to wait for the 750 LT. Because you, you just know that that's what's going to happen with McLaren. There's always going to be something new. And if you look now at 675 LTs, the, the way that they are dropping in value is unbelievable. And as a buyer, they're probably the steal of the century, or they probably will end up being the steal of the century. It's actually the only McLaren. I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't buy one, but it is the only McLaren I'd consider buying, the 675 LT. And we have said this before. If you look at the values of them and the look, look at the values of the Speciali and how many Specialis they made to the 675, the 458 is still 30, 40 gram more than the if, 675. If the 675 drops under 200 grand, oh, I mean, that is literally the steal of a century. Yeah. And it's it's hard to know whether McLaren used values will go back up. I mean, the 12, you can get 12 C's now under 100 grand. 
And that's outrageous. That is a full-fledged supercar. Oh, there is a reason for that, though. Well, yes, because I think particularly the 12 Cs, the build quality was pretty poor. Uh, and they did have a lot of reliability issues, electronic and mechanical. So I think people have been getting out of them and, and they're not that desirable because... 12C to 650S is such a huge leap that you can get 650S now for 20 or 30 grand more and it's a better car in every single way. Yeah. Um, but... They are fundamentally the same though. Underneath. They are, but I think a lot of those issues were ironed out yeah. and, and improved yeah. for that step. Yeah. Um, but, but they yeah. changed their model. They completely... So mm. they stopped calling it 12C mm. and said, we've got another new car. Yeah. 650. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, agreed. It should just be a facelift 12C, right? Yeah. Then it might have done the values better. Exactly. It's hard to know. And I guess we can't really talk about the 600 LT and McLaren in general without mentioning the Senna. Because <clears throat> this was the first time that both of us have seen the Senna and sort of dynamically moving. I unfortunately wasn't able to attend the, 600, uh, the Senna launch. Uh, lots of you asked why I wasn't at the Senna launch. I just couldn't make it, unfortunately. I had too many conflicting dates. Um, but also, uh, I was aware that the Senna launch drive was track only. And so I, I wasn't urged to cancel my other commitments. I don't think I would have been able to cancel my other commitments anyway. But it's a car that I want to drive on the road. It's a road car. It's a car yep. that I want to drive on the road. I know it's track obsessed, but um, so hopefully there'll be another opportunity further down the line. But what did you make of the Senna visually and dynamically? Uh, put it this way. I never took my sunglasses off. <laughs> uh, again, I was very underwhelmed. Like, I, I didn't even have a really good look at it. I'm just not that bothered. So did you see the P1 GT by Lanzante? Yes. Now that... That's more like it. Wow. Uh, that thing blew me away. First one I've seen. First, well, mate. It's the first, only one. It's the only one. one. They one. finished it about two days before they just Oh, okay, it. fun. So this is, so Lanzante uh, specialise in McLaren F1s, F1 GTRs and F1 GTR long tails. Uh, they've road legalised a lot of F1s and F1 GTRs. Sorry, road legalised F1 GTRs. Um, and they've put their hands to a few P1 GTRs. They made the P1 LM was the Lanzante. Um, and they've now made this kind of bespoke P1 GTL, B, uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> so many letters. P1 <laughs> GT long tail. No, P1 GT, which is a long tail. Bloody hell, it's complicated, isn't it? Um, but yeah, this is an extended P1. It looks unbelievable in my opinion. Yeah. And I would have it hands down every day of the week over a center. Yeah, it's more money though, mate. Okay, well, this is the question. Do you think the Senna's are going to do what the P1s did and come out and immediately be 300, 400, 500 grand over list? Uh, no, because they're making more of them. And I don't think it's as groundbreaking as the P1 was. Do you think it's as desirable? Um, I heard... I don't know how true this is that some people say I'm wrong, but they're not sold out. As in, you can still buy a Senna. Some people say, no, they're sold out. You can't buy any more. But then people have either got one coming or, or have realised what a terrible mistake they've made. <laughs> We're being hypercritical of a McLaren, unfortunately, in this podcast. And I don't think we mean to. We are both previous McLaren owners. Um, but I, I'm with you. I mean, I just was... Oh, I just I just think it's hideous. I still think... I've said from day one, I think it's hideous. And I, I'm so, speaking to everyone that's driven it from the press launch. They were all blown away by it. I mean, you know, even Paul Wallace. Oh, it's a press car. Like, everyone says it was unbelievable. And I don't deny that it probably is unbelievable. But all McLarens are. All McLarens are incredible and they're they often are. the bargain of the lot. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, that Senna will probably compete with cars that are 2 million plus yeah. in terms of performance and abilities. So yeah. it will be a bargain. I, but I just could never, I could never lift up my f imaginary garage door at my multi-million pound mansion and see that and go, oh yeah, get me my Senna. No. I, I would be embarrassed. I mean, I would have a P1 every day of the week, even if, it, even if it's five or 10 seconds slow around a track. I, th I still think the P1 is stunning. I still, my heart drops whenever I see one. I, I, like, I just think the P1's amazing. The Senna does nothing for me. Same. 
Well, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got no, no more. No, I'm, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I'm totally with you on this. I, I, I say, I, I don't know why we're being so critical of McLaren, and I apologise um, to any McLaren fans or McLaren owners out there. Uh, anyone who's got a 600 LT coming, I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Yep. I'm sure you'll love it. Anyone who's got a Senna coming, I'm sure you'll thrash anything else that comes even yep. close to you. But personally tony and i um were were underwhelmed by those yeah. two cars um uh, at festival Pete. so a quick one there uh 48 pista versus 600 lt i think is actually quite a the two quite relatable cars i actually don't think the pista is going to challenge the 720s i think they're different different kind of cars so yeah from visuals alone pista or 600 lt uh, Pista. Yeah, I knew you were going to say in, that. In, in every... I had to ask the question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, well, let's move on from our, our, our disappointed Ferrari experience, our McLaren hating, to uh, potentially treacherous... Lamborghini? Nope. <laughs> 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 yes, I mean, I literally can't stand this fanboy. <laughs> to another manufacturer that you love, we're coming on to the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. No, I like this car. Okay, well, good. Because I've been wanting to talk about this car ever since it got launched. I, I mean, this is a long time ago now. Uh, so let's get into it. Let me know your thoughts. Kick us off. So I saw it last week. Uh, first time in the flesh. Uh, um, Silverstone. It was on display there. Uh, instantly, I thought, that's better. The front of the car, a lot more presence, a lot wider. Um, the lines because that's what Aston's all about right just there should be things of beauty um, inside I was a little bit underwhelmed if I'm honest it's a bit German essentially sure uh, headline was nice that was all nice Englishly stitched as, <laughs> as they say Handmade, um, sir. and I, I got out and I spoke to the marketing man there Hello, whoever you are. He knew me. Oh, it's brilliant. There we go. You're so, you're so yeah, connected. Yeah, yeah, but so I, couldn't, I can't remember his name. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> great, great at networking. That um, so I ended up, we was talking about him and they were very happy with what they did designed and from rolling, they say it's as fast or faster than an 812, which is a big achievement. Wow. One problem. Go on. The price. What is the price? Spect, yeah, or the car there, yeah, quarter of a million quid, and it's just too much money, mate. Well, hold on a sec. If it's going to be eight twelve type performance, it's not. It's the bargain of the century. Well, when I was talking to him, he mentioned that and said that we was going to pitch it up with an eight twelve. And the reason why we didn't price wise is because of the brand. Mm. One big other problem. Go on. The eight twelve sold out, mate. Sure. The DBS isn't. Okay. So, and they're going to make two hundred a year. <laughs> oh, so you think the residuals aren't going to be? Great? No, 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 no. And we're going to find this out quite quickly by its smaller brother, which by is? the Vantage. Okay. Advantage. Okay. Can I interrupt? Go. Oh, no, uh, no, it's your podcast. Because no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you only just sat there looking pretty. Um, so okay, so obviously we differ on opinion usually with Aston, but I quite, I'm quite glad to hear that you you like the idea of this car. Now I, I'm with you that I think the pricing is a little bit off on all of their models at the moment. We all know the Vantage, unfortunately, wasn't an option for me in the end because spec up it was just too much. But I am of this weird ilk where I. I don't think about residuals when I buy cars. I'm not rich, I'm just an idiot, but I buy cars because I wanna buy a car and I accept that it's gonna cost me a lot of money. And I mean, I had an F-Type and it bombed, I had a 4C and it bombed, I had a McLaren 540C and it bombed. I mean, the Ferrari's potentially the first car that might not bomb, but I'm putting enough miles on it that it could. So it's just not the way I go about buying cars. And I, I totally understand that that's probably a bit of a stupid thing to do, but as a car let's forget about residuals future values blah 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 as a car that dbs superleggera excites me so so much because i loved the db11 i actually preferred the db11 v8 to the v12 because i thought the v12 was too soft it was too much of a grand tour and then here come aston they make it more aggressive they make it look fantastic i thought it sounded brilliant going up and down the hill 
And I'm like, well, there's the DB11 for me. Now, at 250 grand, it's definitely not for me because I do not have that cash. And if you're asking, do I want a DBS Superleggera against a 600 LT or uh, what else is it, 250 grand? 48 or... Or the new Bentley's 200 grand. The new Bentley. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't have no. Well, the thing, I, I suppose it's a slightly different car I, I, to, to those. You know, this They're is a front-engine... GT engine, cars. Still front-engine GT, right? Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Telephone call. Um, <laughs> it's... I just think it's fair. I think it's super attractive and, and fair enough, fine. It might drop to under 200 in six months after you've put 4,000 miles on it. Um, but then I'll buy them at that point. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I just, I really like that car and I'm trying to look past the pricing um, and just accept that because it wasn't the Vanquish overpriced as well. Yeah, yeah. Which is why they give a lot of money off them. Sure. But it's still a brilliant car. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like not, the Vanquish. Yeah. I, I don't want to take away from the fact of I think what Aston have done there which I, I have to applaud and the fact that you're talking positively about it has to be applauded as well so taking our car buyers and sellers hat off for a second I just think they've smashed it out the ball the ballpark smashed it out of the park with that car it, it's, de it's definitely the best they've done for a while like I said it's made me sit up and look again what about the Vantage V600, M600, V600. <laughs> Why not? No, mate, please. Oh, I love that. No. This is a very limited, the final run of basically... The some, final, final. Essentially some Vantage chassis they had left over. Like, like the Zonda. What can we do with this? And there, it is, the, that old shape Vantage is becoming like the Zonda, but I love that old shape Vantage so much that I'm sort of all for it. Yeah. Um... It's, yeah, it's the final, final one. It's a GT12, essentially. Manual, seven-speed dog leg. Um, different... Oh, I'm getting another phone call. God, I'm popular. Um, uh, custom body, super aggressive. You getting a phone call? No, I'm just putting it on silent because oh, well I'm done. a bit more professional. Uh, <laughs> mine was on silent, it's vibrating. Uh, anyway, I like that. But I just think all of Aston, all of what Aston are doing at the minute are great. The only thing I was kind of hoping for was I was hoping for a secret Valkyrie demonstration. When is that going to come? When oh, are we going to see a moving Valkyrie? Oh, okay, fine. Just in general. In general. Are yeah. you excited about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think it's brilliant. Yeah. So yeah, DBS Superleggera, a big thumbs up from us. Um, I'd love to get behind the wheel of that car at some point. I just think it's going to be, be a bit of me. Yeah, yeah. A bit of me. Now I'm going to sit back and drink some water and let Tony talk about the Porsche Speedster concept. Yes. Now, alarmingly, um, this is a concept. This is not the actual car that they are going to go and they are going to make it. It's coming. It's definitely coming. So this is a GT3 convertible, essentially. Uh, yes. Barquette. No, not yeah, Barquette. It, 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 you can you can't put the roof up, can you? Uh, you can't put the roof up. Yeah, I think you can. I you think can. I think there oh, will okay. be a. This is that's a concept. Sorry. You'll be able to put the. You'll be. It'll be like a buckle thing fine okay. you know like the box the spider that totally. sort of thing right i'm with you carry on okay um so yeah if convertible gt3 um limited production at first we thought 911r numbers these isn't these aren't this isn't confirmed by this the is way all so, your porsche porsche collector speculation is, yeah this is all speculation um, we now think that there may be 1900 of them or 1948 because that's when they began Porsche okay essentially so it's 70th anniversary it would kind of make sense sure um, I loved it really yeah 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 why did you love it because of Porsche <laughs> like I love the piece though even if it was crap I'd still love you it you still love it but yeah yeah <sighs> You didn't like it? No. What, no. The look? I didn't like the look. I know it's a concept, so it's, it's a bit bulky in times, but but, but uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I, it's a GT3 with a big bulge at the back. I just thought it looked, I didn't think it looked good. And I thought it was just a car for a collector. I, like, I didn't. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, but then jog on. Do you know what I mean? Like, like uh, Porsche are all about their driver's cars. You know, these are cars to be driven. This is all about, you know, we make cars for drivers. We don't make cars for collectors. And this just felt like a collector's car. Yeah, maybe. May yeah, maybe you're right. Because they don't, you know. Oh, I want one. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. Well, we'll have to wait and see as and when the actual real version gets launched. There wasn't much sort of 
talked about with the concept because it is just a concept so uh, it went it battered up and down the hill didn't sound particularly good I don't uh, think the livery done it justice either yeah the livery didn't look good it just looked bulky it looked missized it looked, it, I didn't like it wasn't a fan I didn't like the mirrors your like, mirrors were weird poke your eyes out yeah <laughs> but yeah. again I guess hashtag concept um, but cool to see I'm glad they brought it along and, and, and dynamically displayed it by running it up and down the hill they brought it along because they're going to make it yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. a bit of a giveaway there Porsche <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually it was cool the whole Porsche 70th anniversary celebration was quite fun wasn't it yeah yeah Mark Webber Mark Webber was there all yep. weekend as the Porsche world champion um, doing bits and bobs loads of iconic cars throughout the year awesome to see the, the pink pig from this year's Le Mans yep. the, the the 911 RSR in the pink livery which I love Looks so good did they have film. the Rothman the Rothmans the blue yeah I think that was there as that? well I think that it was, was on display it was on static display wasn't yeah. it yeah so cool yeah. to see those cars because I thought those, those liveries were freaking awesome um, I want to touch now briefly on sort of on I guess the independence um, I felt like this year in the supercar paddock there were a handful of sort of smaller bespoke companies displaying pretty mega cars um, so to rattle them through uh, the Koenigseggs yep a couple of Koenigseggs three Koenigseggs on display actually yep. wasn't it the RSN Thor and the Regera yep the Apollo IE yeah yeah I like that car the W Motors Cars? Is that the, the green one? Fenir? Fenir? Was that the green thing? Or no, was it wasn't, that green, it wasn't green, was it? It was grey or black. Fenir. Fen- Fenir? What was, what the, was green the green convertible one? one? That everyone was like going crazy The Regera. For? Is that green, what it was? Green carbon. Uh, exposed okay, carbon Regera. Fine. That's the kind of egg. And we also had the best car of the entire festival. The Singer DLS. Yeah. Uh, what about the, Z- the Zonda? Oh yeah, Zonda. But I mean, that's not new, mate. And they're not independent. I mean, like Zonda are independent, but like they've been around for so long. That Barquetta was beautiful, but your yeah, the Barquetta, yeah. yeah, and the Huayra, like like cool. But I don't. I mean, like how how if don't get me wrong, I love Pagani, but that didn't. Everything else felt kind of new. Yeah, I guess. How many Zondas and Huayras have seen yeah, the festival? Speed? Okay, good. Just singer then, please. Okay, so uh, how much do you know about Singer? How much do you like Singer? I, I like them because they're based on a Porsche and basically they are old Porsches that are now new, essentially. So I love the idea. I've never driven one. But. So they are perfected in every possible way. Yeah. I mean, it was like a literally taking a project car and take, and timesing it by 10 million. I mean, and you na- love that. NASA levels of engineering yeah. involved, literally. And I love it. I've always loved everything Singer have done, all the cars they've released, I've just, I'd be like, blah, blah, blah. I, would, <laughs> I would pay a lot of money, which well, is how much they cost, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to have one of those cars. They would definitely be on my list. And this year, they revealed at Festival of Speed, the DLS, the, uh, the white car, dynamic lightweight study. Yeah, the, white, the white car. car. Yeah. And they yeah. were running a red one up the hill. Yeah. Now, this is still a concept. The important thing to say is this is still concept form. So even the white one that was on display isn't a final, final version. That is essentially as close as they think they're going to get to what the production car will look like. Uh The price. (laughs) Well, actually, no, no, I'm going to talk about it a bit more first. Then then I'm going to get you to guess the the price. So this is all them working with Williams Advanced Technology. So Williams F1 team have a sort of side a company called Williams Advanced Technology do lots of stuff with Formula E and bits and more as well and so they basically went to Williams and said right well, ha- let's work together so Williams have essentially developed this engine uh, which sounds like a freaking Formula 1 car get this the car that was running up and down the hill was uh, limited to about 7,500 or 8,000 RPM the final car will rev to 9,300 so you think it sounds good now it's going to sound I mean oh that thing sounded amazing um, all of the components inside heavy carbon fibre roll cage suspension all of this trickery it is a race car this is the GT2 RS if not the GT3 Cup to the 911 S yeah. I mean it's that extreme in terms of its difference you would have both cars alongside each other this isn't the DLS to replace your existing singer they're very very different the price if a standard singer, we can't really say standard, but if a, a you know a normal singer is around four hundred grand, roughly, depending on how custom you go, guess the uh, price of the DLS. Million. Higher. No way. Seriously. Higher. <laughs> 
Uh, 1.2. Higher. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? Not 1.5. Higher. No. <laughs> More than 1.5. I was told, and this is not to be quoted, and this is not fact, <laughs> 1.8. Shh. L- <laughs> La- that's La Ferrari. 1.8. Now, very interestingly, the cars we spoke about just before, Koenigsegg, Regera, uh, Aston Martin, Vulcan, we didn't actually mention, but the AMR Pro was there. Uh, the Apollo's a bit more. Um, oh, and the new Brabham, that was amazing as well. They are all circa 1 to 1.8 mil. So, this is a lot of money we're talking about. and It's huge. It's huge. Now, the only thing is, in my mind, the level of engineering and research and development that's gone into the singer just about justify that cost or price. Now, the problem is, it's so much money. <laughs> so, so, How do you justify? Oh, well, I I, well, they justify it by saying that 22 million pounds worth of research and development went into the cars, if not more. So like, they've got to make their money back somewhere. Like, the amount of cost it make, cost them to actually physically make the cars is so high. Now, if you look at Koenigsegg Regera, fine. Uh, again, I think there's in, an inordinate amount of bits that go into it, but I'm trying to think of an example. I mean, it's so much money and I can't really give an excuse or justify it, but I feel like I'm trying to because I just love that car so much. No, I can't help you. I, 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 I thought it was going to be 600 grand. Yeah. And I very nearly came to find you to say, like, let's just, like, borrow every bit of money we ever have and <laughs> team up and buy one. And then the guy, I was like, how do I get one? He goes, well, obviously, it's still a concept, um, but we assume the asking price is going to be around 1.8 mil. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, you're serious. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, let's wait and see. Final price is not confirmed. These are, you know, as I said, Please don't take my word as fact at this point. But what a thing. What a thing. And anyone who gets their hands on that car will be insanely lucky. Yeah. And I know if you've, if you've got £1.8 million to spend on a car, you, you've got a 918 Spider, you've got a Laugh, you've got a P1. You, you have got everything else. It's just another car for the collection. However... It is so, that is so much money. Okay, so tell me your thoughts, because as I say, of these other cars, these kind of independents, these track only, these big mega cars, the Koenigseggs, the Brabham, the Paganis, the W Motors, etc. How do you feel about them? When you see them going up the hill, how do you see them in the supercar paddock? What are your thoughts? Well, we're spoiled, aren't we? Like, I think they're cool, but I do overlook them a bit because I can't have one. So the cars that really interest me are the cars that I can physically own and buy. It, it's also why I'm not that concerned about the Senna because I, I don't want one because I can't own one either. So why, do, why am I looking at it? it? It's pointless. So as much as I like them, not the, not the Senna, but the, the others, they're beautiful works of art and I really appreciate them and they're lovely to look at. I kind of don't really go much for it. I don't lust for one. I don't dream for one because I'm not going to have one. So I kind of know what you mean. They're a little bit sort of too far gone. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, they're an upper echelon that we don't realistically think we're ever going to reach. Hey, you never know. We might. Um, no, I will, but I'm just not ready yet. But also, if I was operating at that level and spending one to two mil, I- I'm not sure... Koenigsegg, W Motors, but I'm not sure that's the route I would personally go. I think I'd either buy sort of classic something or... Yes, sit it out and get TDFs or LaFerraris yeah. or, or 918s. You know, these ind- these new independents, I don't know. They're just not necessarily the route I would personally go. Yeah, would you would you want to invest your hard-earned money, no matter how much you've got of it, into a small brand, essentially? Because that's what you're doing. Absolutely. You're investing in their product. Um, 
a few notable cars to mention or notable mentions is that how, is that what i mean small mentions little sides uh things that stood out for me i'll rattle them off and then you can chuck in any that you saw polestar one that sort of volvo volvo yeah. polestar concept the the hybrid thing thought was really cool I loads like of talk it was drifting all over the place uh f pace svr really cool got went very in, good went and sat in one um really really nice that was cool being twatted up the hill um lotus i went up the hill in a 430 cup uh, an Exige 430 Cup, one of the best sounding cars I've ever heard in my entire life. Really? Unbelievable sound. Unbelievable, unbelievable sound. Um, and there's lots of exciting things, I think, coming from Lotus over the cup next coming years. So yeah, that might be one of the last great sort of, you know, Exiges. I don't really know. But an anyway. electric or hybrid? Mm, I just think, I think they've got some big investment now from Geely, Geely, Geely. Um, and I think we're going to see lots of cool, exciting things coming, okay. coming out of there. Um, and any others that I wanted to quickly mention... No. Did you see the Did you see the Porsche crash into the back of the other Porsche? Yes, G- Porsche 911 GT3 Cup thrashing it into nine six four nine one. So that's a three million pound car. An old Porsche, yeah. He was on a time lap, or he was doing a time run, and he found an old slow car and bashed into the back of it. Everyone was okay. Um, Luckily, any other cars that that you want to like that jumped out at you? Just little passing mentions. Uh. The Mustang, the Bullet. The Bullet Mustang, you like that? No, I'm just saying, it's, just, <laughs> it's cool. I like the old one. Yeah, no, fair enough. Anything else? No. No, okay. Uh, well, that, <laughs> that brings an end to our Goodwood Festival of Speed summary or mm-hmm. special episode. It was a slow start, um, but I've woken up uh, ever so slightly as the as the podcast has gone on. <laughs> You've had some um, water. Yeah, we've had some water and, and woken myself up. Uh, I'd love to know, or we'd love to know what you guys saw at Festival of Speed this year. There was so much going on. We've we've not mentioned any of the motorsport <laughs> side of things or uh, any of the sort of racing cars, of which there are a ton. Um, so yeah, let us know what you saw, your favourite moments, your highlights. Mine obviously was uh, driving Ivan the Volvo up the hill climb. Uh, absolutely <laughs> epic. Uh, but it was another incredible year and the countdown now begins to Festival of Speed 2019. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to hit subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss future episodes. Uh, if you're listening to us, make sure you are following us on whatever platform you are listening. You can follow me, Sam, at Seen Through Glass on pretty much any platform. And you can follow Tony at Gravelwood Car Sales. Again, pretty much any platform platform uh we will catch up with you very very soon adios adios